this video, we are going to be tackling the lead code question, implement, try. And yes, this word that you see right here is actually pronounced try. Most people don't care, but there are some people out there who will make it a big deal if you pronounce it tree. So be forewarned. The data structure itself is relatively common. If you've used any type of messaging platform, if you've used spell checker, you're probably familiar with when you're trying to type into a box and it's trying to predict the text for you. That is a try. Also, in a more rare scenario, maybe you are a network engineer and a lot of these really exotic network engineering algorithms implement tries as well too because you're trying to predict an IP address. And the try is just a tree at the end of the day with a few key differences. But let's talk about the similarities first. The similarities are that it's a node, just like any other tree, tries have nodes. And beneath those nodes, we have levels. We have children that you can access in this tree-like data structure. But remember, it's pronounced try. But how is the try different? Well, first in its use case, its use case is there to predict mostly words. Sometimes, like I said, sometimes IP addresses, but you're there to predict mostly words. Another thing is that the nodes are usually have more than one value inside of them and they're designed that way. Unless you go out of your way, a regular tree is just going to contain one value like A, B, C. But a try is going to have many values contained within the same node and it's built for that. And these different values are self-contained within key value pairs. If you notice, there's a colon here. And the reason that we have this colon is because there's a little place for you to connect the next level. So let's just say that we want to insert the word bat. We want to have predictive capabilities for if we search the word bat. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to, just like a tree, we're going to insert another value and we're going to tie it together. And we're going to do so one by one. And we'll connect the B to the A. I know that line is a little bit crooked, but we'll just rock with it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect the A to the T. And we will have predictive search for the word bat. Oh my God, that's so cool. But there's another part that we have to be concerned about. There's another thing that really separates the try from the tree. And that is we have terminus or we have things that terminate the end of the word. So if you look at the word bat, we could also spell a word like batty. It's a really cool British word. British people have the coolest slang. Let's just say we also want to be able to spell the word batty, like crazy. You are a batty. <laughs> Well, what you would do is you would also tack on the T and the Y. But if you notice, bat is a prefix of batty. And we could get those confused unless we have a terminus or unless we have something that indicates that this is the end. This is the ending word. Sometimes this can come in the form of an asterisk. But we're going to implement it in the form of a Boolean because I think a Boolean is a lot easier to understand in our case. But with this terminus, not only can we predict the word bat, but we can also let people know that bat is a prefix for batty. We could also spell the word batty as well, too. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little carried away with the word batty. So at the end, we'll also have a terminus. We'll have something to let the people or the data structure itself know that batty is the end of a word. And that's pretty much how tries work. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did, that I just talked about that we were going to do before, but we're going to do it with an array. So there's different ways that you could do this. You could do this with a hash map or you could do it with an array. If you're going to implement this in a work setting, I would probably use a hash map, but with a simple leak code question and we're just trying to pass the leak code question, it probably makes more sense to use an array. So in order to implement this array-based try, what we're going to do is we're going to insert the word bat into it. If there's nothing inserted into the try, the try is pretty much useless. It's empty. We have to put words into it. And that's what we're about to do. 
And the way that we do that is we just iterate through the word step by step. We're going to iterate through the B, the A, and the T. And for B, for each B, A, and T, we're going to create an array. So let's just go ahead and start at the B. For the B, we're going to insert a B at the second part of the array. Why do we input it at the second part of the array? Because this part stands for A, that part stands for B, obviously, this part stands for C, D, you get the picture. Each For each element in the array, it stands for the letter, and it's done so in ABC-based form. So we've got the B taken care of. Next thing that we're going to do, we're going to create another array-based node. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm going to grab a node real quick, and we're going to do the exact same thing. But at this part, we're going to input the A, and then we're going to tie them together via a property so that they can search for each other. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do so with the T. Once we get to the T, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to take this part. Uh, we're going to create another array-based node. We're going to place the T, and this is going to go down further, but let's just say the T is right here. And going to go ahead, make that look a little bit bigger so it looks better. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to tie them together so that we can search for them. And at the very end, remember we have to create our terminus. And at the end here of the word bat, we're going to say is word equal to true. And we're going to create this property here in a second. So don't worry if it's a little confusing. So let's go ahead, let's hop over into IntelliJ and let's start coding it up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create a brand new class. I'm going to call this try. Now, some people create try nodes some people create a brand new separate class with a separate node but what we're going to do is we're going to create a pattern that's very similar to a linked list we're going to create a self-referencing class and you may be familiar with this because the nodes in a linked list are very similar instead of if with a linked list we would have something like this we would just have something that's says node, but we're going to create a self-referencing class that says try. And that pattern is going to be very similar. We're going to have them connect to each other in a way that's very similar to a linked list. But instead of having each individual nodes, each node is going to be an array so that we could create a tree. Think about almost like a linked list, but instead of just having simple individual values, each value is a node and these nodes can kind of connect to each other very similar to a tree. Pretty cool, huh? So we also need to be able to tell when the end of the word is. And the AI is trying to say end of is end of word, but we're just going to say is word. That's pretty much going to alert the data structure, alert the developer when this is the end of the word. This is a word. So in order to actually be able to use the try, we have to put data into it. It doesn't just come with all of the words inserted into it. We have to actually insert the words. And because this is a self-referencing node, we're going to say node.this to be able to grab that head. If we want to be able to get to the head of the linked list or the try, we're going to say this. And in some cases you would have node, you would actually have the head passed to you. But in our case, we don't have that. So we need to be able to get it with the this. So next thing we're going to say for, and all that we're going to do is we're going to iterate over everything in the array and we're going to grab the index. So this is how you grab an index. This is kind of strange looking terminology, but this is going to give us the index so that we can place it into the array. See, arrays are zero based. So we have zero and we have one and we need to be able to place our letters in there to the corresponding index. So if we have so if we have B, B corresponds to one, so we need to input it into the one part of the array, and that's what we do in that line of code right there. That's all that line of code does. So if there's nothing in the actual array, we're going to obviously and we're going to create a brand new try, then we're going to insert it. And this is a double whammy because this is also going to insert it. And if you notice, this is very similar to a linked list. This is also going to move us to the next array. That's pr pretty cool, huh? And then what we're going to do is we're going to say node is word is equal to true. We've just inserted a whole new word and we're done with the insert. 
And next are the search and the starts with, which are going to be incredibly easy. So in order to implement the search, the only thing that we're going to have to do is return a Boolean if we find the word or not. So if we find the word, we return true. If we don't find the word, we return false. We're gonna go ahead, grab the root node, begin iterating through the string that's passed to the search. And here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to search for the node. So in the node, we're going to have an array and we need to go in that actual node in the array and search if the node is there. And then we're going to go ahead, assign it to the node variable. And we're going to do this because this is going to do two things. Number one, it's going to actually search for us, obviously. And it's also going to assign to the next node. But we need to check if we found it. So if we didn't find it, we're going to return false. But if we do find it, we're going to go ahead, hop outside this for loop right here, and we're going to return uh, node dot is word. And we're going to do this because we need to check if it's a prefix or not. If it's a prefix or not, it's not actually the word. Very similar to what we talked about on the whiteboard. We need to make sure if it's the actual word or if it's the prefix or not. And the starts with is going to be the exact same thing as we did before. We're going to have try dot node dot this. We're going to go ahead, uh, assign the node to the um, part in the array where we actually find the index letter. We're going to assign it so that we can move it forward. We're going to have node if node is equal to null, just like we had before. We're going to return false. And then we don't have to actually check if the uh, is word is equal to true. We can just return true because it doesn't matter. If it starts with, we can also get away with it just being a prefix. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead, uh, just copy all this so that we can go ahead and put it into the code editor and leak code. And I'm actually, I think I'm just gonna grab this whole entire thing because it's the whole entire class. I'm just going to grab the whole entire thing. So let's go ahead, bring this over. Just gonna go ahead, clear all of that, all that out. Let's go ahead. Uh, paste that into the word editor. Let's go ahead and run it. Thank you, God. I thought it was going to mess up. Anyways, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead, smash that submit button. I'm so excited that it actually passed. And our time complexity is N. We are good to go. And our memory is equal to N as well too. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.